Right now on News 3 this morning Sunday, it is cap toss time in Madison as thousands of Badgers prepare to graduate. How today's ceremony will impact you whether you know a graduate or not. Plus, Green Cab announces it is suspending service in Madison after a slew of recent robberies threaten the safety of its drivers and passengers. And we're saying they have a chance as the Packers prepare for their must-win game against the Bears. We're breaking down everything that must happen for the team to earn a spot in the playoffs. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday. Good morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning Sunday. It is 630 in the morning on December 16th. I'm Josh Breider with meteorologist Chris Reese. Chris spectacular day yesterday. Oh, an amazing day. And guess what? We get to do it all over again. The only difference today, we may see a little bit more cloud cover, but Josh, we're already off to a warmer start, man. That's what I like yes, to hear. Yes, that's what we're going to see. Let's go ahead and look over the edge water right now. Beautiful. I, it always is. I will tell you what. I absolutely love that shot every morning. Yesterday at this time, it was about 19 degrees. We're at 24, so already we're seeing things beginning to pace much warmer than we were this time. Yesterday, 11 degrees warmer as you work your way to Camp Douglas. The Dells, you guys are 17 degrees warmer this morning than you were at this time yesterday the temperature there 34 degrees right now a lot of folks have already made it into the 30s same for mineral point and viroqua uh, so we are seeing more of that showing up we'll actually watch those temperatures likely make it towards the 40s this afternoon but we will see more cloud cover. We have one little streak of cloud cover over Madison right now. Another one starting to arrive from the north and west. We'll track that into the afternoon. But for the most part, this morning will be mostly sunny. Some patchy fog is again possible, mainly in sheltered valleys by the afternoon. Still more sunshine with a few clouds. Temperatures topping out around 44. Definitely a day to get outside again. It is one of those days, and I'll tell you what, I think we'll have a couple more, even though things may be a little bit cooler going through our forecast before we see snow chances. That is good news, Chris. Yep. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Breaking overnight, taking action after a slew of robberies across town. The Green Cab Taxi Company has suspended its service indefinitely. A spokesperson confirmed overnight that the company is pulling its drivers from the road for safety reasons. Here's a live look at the Green Cab lot this morning where those cars will now sit. Green Cab ended its service around 930 last night after a taxi driver was robbed at gunpoint. This one responding to a ride request near North Mill Street. Another driver was also robbed Friday while picking someone up near the 5300 block of Raywood Road. We're told it took around two hours for all of the drivers to be called in. The spokesperson says it's unclear when the drivers will be able to return to the roads. We have seen a string of carjackings and robberies in Madison this week. The latest came yesterday. First, a teenager was robbed at gunpoint and was forced to drive to a credit union. Madison police say the 16-year-old was sitting in his car on Rosenberry Road just before 11 a.m. when another teen and a man pulled him out. After a struggle, the teenager su suspect allegedly hit the victim in the face with a gun and threatened to shoot him. The two robbers took electronics but told the victim they would give them back if he gave them the money. The three drove to the UW Credit Union on Northport Drive where the victim was able to tell employees about what happened. Police were called but the suspects got away. The teen suffered a minor face injury. Then last night, two teenagers were alleged into their car when their two suspects approached them with guns. Madison police say this happened in the 1100 block of Rutledge Street near Lake Minota in downtown. The suspects got away with what police are calling personal property. Madison police are still investigating this string of robberies, so anyone with information is asked to call them or Madison Area Crime Stoppers. Right now, Madison police are trying to cut down on the number of carjackings citywide. Police say be aware of your surroundings, especially in places prone to carjackings like gas stations, deserted intersections, parking garages, even your driveway. Also drive with your doors locked, avoid driving alone at night, and park in well-lit areas close to buildings whenever possible. Now, if you do get your car stolen, please say arguing with robber is not the best idea. Instead, try and remember what they look like so you can give a good description to officers later. Janesville police are looking for ways to make sure high schoolers are driving safely around lunchtime after a fatal crash there. 
Officers say the lunchtime rush is a problem because hundreds of inexperienced and less attentive drivers are suddenly all out on the roads in a time crunch. Janesville police are suggesting extending that lunch period, issuing more tickets to students who are caught speeding and even closing campuses so students can't leave for food. These possible changes come as Parker High School student Ty Ty Matajevic faces charges of homicide by negligent driving and could be sentenced up to 10 years in prison. In October, police say he was going almost 80 miles per hour on Milton Avenue when he hit another car and killed the 74-year-old driver. Sometimes those cars can be just like a bullet. Uh, let's be honest, you know, they, they kill. And there has to be some maturity and responsibility when you turn over the keys to your child. Matajevic is out on a $2,500 bond and will be back in court for his preliminary hearing after the new year. New this morning, more than 3,000 UW-Madison students are celebrating the end of exams, lectures, and papers this morning as many of them earn their degrees. The winter commencement ceremony is today at the Cole Center. Former MLB Commissioner Bud Selig will deliver the keynote address. He's a Badger alumnus who founded the Milwaukee Brewers and now teaches an advanced level history seminar at the UW called Baseball and Society Since World War II. If you're near the UW campus this morning, plan for some traffic congestion. The ceremony starts at 10. There is some good news this morning for college graduates swimming in student debt. The Department of Education says student debt for 15,000 borrowers will be canceled for a total of about $150 million. This comes with the implementation of an Obama-era rule called Borrow Defense Repayment. Secretary Betsy DeVos tried to block that for more than a year, but two months ago, a federal judge ordered immediate implementation of it. Students whose schools closed while they were enrolled will immediately see their loans canceled. Right now, Baraboo police are increasing officer presence at schools and school district buildings heading into the last week before winter break. They are closely monitoring who is allowed in as the department is looking into video and flyers with anti-Semitic language targeting the schools this week. They threaten students and teachers to stay away this Tuesday, which is when the high school is scheduled to have an all-day event about tolerance. That program will go on as scheduled. This is all in response to the photo of Baraboo students appearing to give a Nazi salute. District officials say the most recent threats are not believed to be credible, but security measures are subject to change. If you were one of the many people in Dane County affected by this summer's flooding, you have one more day to register for federal aid. Tomorrow is the deadline to get that aid through FEMA. You can do it by going online to disasterassistance.gov or by calling the 800 number there on the bottom of your screen. FEMA says they've received more than 1,700 applications for aid in Wisconsin so far. We have some special First Alert Traffic holiday messages, compliments of Madison Police this morning. The department is taking to Twitter to remind everyone to slow down on the Beltline as we start a new work week. This after an officer clocked someone going close to 100 miles an hour near Whitney Way last week. The driver was sighted and no one was hurt. But whoever runs MPD's Twitter page is describing a flash of red that could have been Santa's sleigh. The page asks, was it really Santa and his reindeer at such a high rate of speed? No. What did we see? But a Dodge Ram truck at 97 for speed. We only have a brief moment to celebrate the end of construction season. The headaches along Verona Road will be picking back up this spring. The next phase of the project will wrap up some changes between Williamsburg Way and County PD, which is behind schedule because of weather. Crews will also expand Verona Road to three lanes between Raymond and PD, put bridges over that highway, and expand that stretch to three lanes as well. 6.38 this Sunday morning. AAA says more than one in three Americans will be hitting the road this holiday season, making it the busiest on record. That is 112.5 million travelers predicted for the holidays, an increase of 4.4% from last year, and a new record since AAA began tracking holiday travel. In Wisconsin, 2.3 million residents are expected to be traveling. That is a 4.7% increase from 2017. With extra people on the roads, travel times in the country's most congested cities could be as much as four times longer than a normal trip. The end-of-year holiday travel season is considered to run from December 22nd through Tuesday, January 1st. Amazon is expend, er, extending its free shipping for the holidays, even if customers don't have a Prime account. 
The promotion was slated to end this weekend, but will now end this Tuesday, December 18th. For Prime members, the company also announced it's expanding its list of cities offering same-day and one-day shipping. For those still procrastinating, orders placed before noon on Christmas Eve will arrive by 9 p.m. if you have Prime. If you're hoping to wrap up your holiday shopping in town, the Madison Makers Market is kicking off a week of pop-up shops and events to help local nonprofits. The Make Markets Winter Wonderful will run tomorrow through Saturday at the Commonwealth Gallery on South Baldwin Street. That's located between East Wash and Willie Streets. Believe it or not, we are less than 15 weeks away from the Brewers opening day and just 73 days from spring training. If you're a fan of all the Brewers freebies at Miller Park, this week the Brewers tweeted out their 2019 fan giveaway schedule. On the list are t-shirts, can holders, and a trucker hat. You can also add Jeremy Jeffries, Prince Fielder, Josh Hader, and NL MVP Christian Yelich to your bobblehead collection. And my personal favorite from the list, a fanny pack. It is the big division matchup between the Bears and Packers this afternoon at Soldier Field. We want to remind all you Packers fans there is still a chance for a postseason. If the season were to end right now, the Seattle Seahawks and Minnesota Vikings would take the two wildcard spots, but things could still change. First, the Packers have to win all the remaining games against the Bears, the Jets, and the Lions. Then the Panthers, Eagles, and Redskins each have to lose one game. On top of that, the Vikings have to lose two games or the Seahawks have to lose all three. Obviously a little hard to follow there, so we have all of this laid out for you in detail on Channel3000.com. Again, Green Bay is in Chi-Town this weekend to take on the Bears. Chicago is first in the NFC North with a 9-4 record. Today's game will be the first away game and first division matchup for interim head coach Joe Philbin. The Packers are coming off of a win at home against the Falcons where Aaron Rodgers was able to set a record for the number of consecutive passes he threw without an interception. They beat the Bears by one at Lambeau back in September. Kickoff is set for noon at Soldier Field. The Packers are doing their part to help the Salvation Army this holiday season. Tomorrow, Randall Cobb, Mike Daniels, and Clay Matthews will be signing autographs in exchange for a donation to the organization. They're asking fans to give at least $100. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers has pledged to match those donations up to $50,000. It's happening at the Lambeau Field Atrium from 6 to 7 tomorrow night. And all day long, Packers employees will be ringing bells at grocery stores across Green Bay. And the Packers organization will match those donations too. 6.42 this morning, more sunshine and mild temps ahead for us this Sunday. Here's a live look outside this morning as we wake up. A beautiful shot there of the sunrise in the capital. Chris is in next with more sunshine and warmer temperatures in his first alert forecast heading into this week before Christmas. And send us your best holiday displays. It is the most wonderful time of the year, and we're heading to Lodi to check out one of the most wonderful. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday.
And it's another beautiful morning taking shape here across South Central Wisconsin. The sun not completely up yet, but boy, is that not a beautiful sunrise that we are starting to watch. So as the skies say good morning, I say good morning to you as well. The temperature right now 24 degrees. So we're already seeing things off a little bit warmer than they were this time. Yesterday, 25 at Janesville, Viroqua at 30 and the Dells at 32 right now. So we're already starting to see the impacts of that southerly wind really warming things up as opposed to this time. Yesterday, the Dells are 18 degrees warmer than just 24 hours ago. We're seeing a little bit of some cloud cover though, which is made for a beautiful sunrise. So no true complaints there, but we'll see some added cloud cover going through the day. I don't think it'll be overcast by any means, but I do think the cloud cover will at least decorate things for some time. Really across the country, we are completely quiet other than the Northwest and the Northeast, but we'll see more cloud cover streaming in as we go through the day. That's what the week cold front not sliding on through, but for the most part, high pressure is in control of our weather pattern and it's going to be staying in control of our weather pattern. So that is going to mean continued sunshine, even though temperatures will actually come down a bit behind that cold front. Let's go ahead and show you how things will play out by lunchtime. We'll see those temperatures approaching 40. We'll top out in the low 40s today as well, cooling down into the low and mid 20s today, but then into your Monday, especially with those winds remaining out of the the north and west, it's going to be hard to truly get those temperatures above freezing. I think we'll do it, but only by a degree or two at best, keeping tomorrow's high right around 34 degrees. But we do warm up midweek with temperatures closer to 40, and then we cool down as we get closer towards Christmas. I want to go ahead and show you guys the upper air pattern. For one, pay attention to that colder air in Canada and watch how it begins to gradually move southward, especially as we get you towards Christmas. Here's a push of colder air on the 31st and then we'll see or a 21st rather and then another big push of colder air as we get you in towards Christmas. That I believe will be a colder pattern that shapes up. And in terms of the probability of a white Christmas, we're keeping that chance small for now at about 10%. We only have chances for flurries, but no true chances for some snow going up to the big holiday. Oh, well, I guess we'll take the nice weather anyway. That's right. Maybe we'll have a white New Year. Oh, there we That's go. That's the next holiday. We'll keep our eyes looking for that. We know you're going to stay positive about that snow. <laughs> Absolutely. I will <laughs> until it happens, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Anytime. A unique holiday display at a home in Lodi is gaining a lot of attention online. This mannequin display imitating scenes from a Christmas story and Christmas vacation is a real head turner this season. The owners say this is only their second year doing this and they never expected this display to get so much attention, but it has had positive feedback. Neighbors say it's brought more traffic to the area as people stop by and take pictures. Last year it was just the mannequin and a few days ago he hauled in that was his dad's old camper and put that so now the scene is much more complete. Police have even taken advantage of the display as an effective way to prevent people from stealing packages through a Porch Pirate Awareness Facebook post. The holiday season can be difficult for families who have lost a veteran in the armed services. That's why thousands of people around the country participated in an annual tradition Saturday. It was National Wreaths Across America Day. They placed wreaths on the headstones of fallen veterans at Forest Hill Cemetery in Madison. You know, it's a simple donation of, uh, of support, but to come here and see that there's uh, tombstones that say unknown soldier and there's not enough wreaths to even cover that it makes me makes me feel sad so hopefully next year that we'll, we'll be able to see some more some more folks contribute you can help by going to the website wreathsacrossamerica.org 6.50 is your time this morning, practically perfect in every way. That's how some critics are describing the theatrical return of a one famous nanny. The next chapter in the world of Mary Poppins hits theaters this week, and it's already getting a lot of buzz. We're taking a first look at the supercalifragilisticexpialidocious film, I think I said that right, when News for This Morning Sunday returns.
We are watching a beautiful sunrise take place over the Madison area right now. Still, though, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures are in the mid-20s at the moment at 24 degrees, but the wind is calm, so there's not any kind of wind chill out there. 27 in Janesville right now, 32 in the Dells, same for Fond du Lac. But we'll all see these temperatures warming up as we go into the afternoon under plenty of sunshine, eventually topping out into the low and mid-40s for those highs today. Josh? All right, Chris, thank you. 654 this morning, the world's favorite nanny is back. Mary Poppins Returns is a sequel to the iconic 1964 film Mary Poppins. It continues the story of the Banks family, the original classic featured nearly six decades ago. Here's Chris Martinez. Mary Poppins, you came back. Beloved nanny Mary Poppins brings her magical powers back to Cherry Lane and Mary Poppins returns. The film picks up the story of the Banks family after the children have grown up. They've come to look after the Banks children. Us? Oh, yes, you too. Mary Poppins, played by Emily Blunt, mysteriously reemerges to help Michael Banks through a crisis in Depression-era London. In the first one, she, she comes in and through magic and fantasia, she fixes and heals and saves these Banks children and the whole family, really. And then she leaves at the end. And I remember being devastated by that as a child. Lin-Manuel Miranda plays Poppin's sidekick, Jack. We're not trying to take anything away from the first film. It's just there's more Mary Poppins stories out there. Director Rob Marshall brought animators out of retirement to hand draw the characters for live action scenes. I wanted to pay great homage to that beautiful film and sort of pull the spirit from that into this Sequel. Blunt says she was blindsided when Marshall chose her to recreate the iconic character made famous by Julie Andrews. I was stunned, completely stunned, and then sort of gasped. Angela Lansbury, Colin Firth, and Meryl Streep also star, and 92-year-old Dick Van Dyke, the only cast member from the original movie, dances his way into the hearts of a new generation. I saw a living breeze. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Mary Poppins lands in theaters this Wednesday, December 19th, just in time for the holidays. 656 of your time, and there's a full, re or a full hour of real news ahead on News for This Morning Sunday. Your day's top stories are coming right up, but first, here's a preview of what's to come on an all-new For the Record. Good morning, everybody. I'm Neil Heiden. Today on For the Record, we will introduce you to the Greater Give. It's the concept behind a piece of legislation under consideration in Washington that would make employee giving more attractive with potentially significant benefits to communities here and around the country. My guests are Greater Give founder, task president and CEO Dan Rashke, Vanessa McDowell, the CEO of the YWCA of Madison and Greater Madison Chamber of Commerce president, Zach Brandon, and that's coming up this morning at 10.30 on WISC.
Right now, a local woman is calling for action in a battle with her health insurer after it says it won't cover a major medical procedure. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday. Good morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning Sunday. It is 7 a.m. on December 16th. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese has your Sunday forecast in just a moment, but first here's what's making news this morning. It is graduation day in Madison as thousands of students will earn their degrees from the UW. The winter commencement ceremony is happening this morning at the Cole Center. Former MLB Commissioner Bud Selig will deliver the keynote address. He's a Badger alumnus who founded the Milwaukee Brewers and now teaches an advanced level history seminar at the UW called Baseball and Society Since World War II. So just know if you're near the UW campus this morning, it is going to be a little congested. That ceremony starts at 10. Madison police are trying to cut down on the number of carjackings in the area with some tips to help avoid it from happening to you. First, be aware of your surroundings, especially in places prone to carjackings like gas stations, deserted intersections, parking garages, even your driveway. Also, drive with your doors locked, avoid driving alone at night, and park in well-lit areas close to buildings whenever possible. If you do get your car stolen, please say arguing with a robber is not a good idea. Instead, try and remember what they looked like so you can give a good description to officers at a later time. AAA says more than one in three Americans will be hitting the road this holiday season, making it the busiest on record. That's 112.5 million travelers expected for the holidays, an increase of 4.4% from last year. And that's a new record since AAA began tracking holiday travel. Here in Wisconsin, 2.3 million residents are expected to be traveling, a 4.7% increase from 2017. Travel times in the country's most congested cities could be as much as four times longer than normal. The end of year holiday travel season is considered to run from December 22nd through Tuesday, January 1st. Well, it is another must-win game for the Packers today who are in Chicago to take on the Bears. Chicago is first in the NFC North with a 9-4 record. Today's game will be the first away game and the first division matchup for interim head coach Joe Philbin. The Packers are coming off of a win at home against the Falcons where Aaron Rodgers was able to set a record for the number of consecutive passes he threw without an interception. They beat the Bears by one at Lambeau back in September. Kickoff is set for noon today at Soldier Field. Just about 7.03 this morning, and we are just getting a beautiful shot of that sunrise out there this morning, Chris. That's right, Josh. We have seen a beautiful morning so far. Here it is over the Edgewater Skycam. Lots of pinks and purples showing up, and that has been absolutely spectacular. Temperatures feel good compared to yesterday as well. Right now at 24 degrees, winds are calm, though, so you don't have to worry about a wind chill or anything like that. But we're certainly warmer than we were this time yesterday by 5 degrees in Madison, by 16 degrees as you work way north towards the Dells. And all of us will continue to be warmer than we were this time yesterday, at least by a couple degrees even into the afternoon. 27 in Janesville right now, the freezing mark for the Dells. Black River Falls, a common cold spot, but even they are at 14 degrees compared to being in the single digits. Now we do have one little wave of cloud cover in the picture right now. That one's moving towards Lake Michigan. We'll pay attention to another wave of cloud cover coming at us from southeastern Minnesota over the north woods right now, gradually working its way towards the south and east. I don't think we'll go completely overcast, but I do at least think we'll see some periods of cloud cover this afternoon. Sunshine for the morning, though, 28 to 36 degrees, topping out right around 44. And for the most part, we will see that sunshine. Winds will also be turning out of the north west as cold front moves on through it'll shape up more impacts for your monday josh all right chris thank you timer right now is 704 breaking overnight taking action after a slew of robberies across town the green cab taxi company has suspended its service indefinitely a spokesperson confirmed overnight that the company is pulling its drivers from the road for safety reasons here's a live look at the green cab lot this morning where those cars are now sitting Grab our green cab ended its service around 930 last night after a taxi driver was robbed at gunpoint. This one responding to a ride request near North Mill Street. Another driver was also robbed Friday while picking someone up near the 5300 block of Raywood Road. We're told it took around two hours for all of the drivers to be called in. The spokesperson says it's unclear when the drivers will be able to return to the roads. Well, we've all heard it several times, and maybe we've said it ourselves. I never thought it would happen to me. All too often, that's the mindset when it comes to health insurance coverage and a serious illness. 
But what if you needed a life-altering surgery and your insurance was unwilling to cover it? One local woman had that question. Our Leah Linscheid is answering it this morning in this Call for Action report. I'm a Christian. I am very strong in my faith. It started with head-splitting migraines. I am a teacher. I love to teach. Then problems speaking, sometimes using the wrong words in sentences. Obviously mom, wife, very important parts of my life. Memory loss, sometimes forgetting her own children's names. Is this? Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. These symptoms, life-altering, have changed how Bethany Kelly identifies herself. Can I have a kiss? It's exhausting. Thank you. From a woman of faith, a teacher, a mother, <laughs> to a patient in never-ending pain. You don't realize how much energy it takes out of you to be in constant pain all the time. Bethany's family has been across the country to countless hospitals trying to find a cure. First, they found the source of her pain with help from a Houston doctor. His diagnosis was a pineal cystic tumor. The longer it stays in there, and the more it grows, the more damage it's doing. Surgery seemed to be the only option, a procedure this particular doctor has done before, except Bethany's insurance wasn't willing to cover it. She's appealed their decision more than once. I filed for just the pre-surgery appointment, and it was, it was denied. They said that I could get the same care within the dean system. Um, I haven't found anybody in the dean system to help me. Bethany says no surgeons within Dean's network have been willing to perform the operation. Without it, it's been hard to fulfill the roles that make Bethany what? Bethany. I wasn't supposed to eat it? I thought I was. I, I have days where I just, I have to cry out to God and say, God, please just take away the anger and take away the pain, not only physically, but just the emotional pain of going through something that's scary. One of the biggest challenges is that people don't understand exactly what their coverage is until they need to use it. If this happened to you, would you even know where to start? For most of us, the answer is no. And that's because most of us don't pick out our own health plan. We're having other people make those decisions for us, either the government or our employers. Scott Kowalski is the VP of Marketing at WPS Health Solutions and teaches part-time over at Madison College. He says there are a couple of things we can do to make sure our plans are as comprehensive as possible. Oftentimes, employers will offer two or three options to choose from. So, do your homework. We research weeks, months before we purchase a, an auto, before we purchase a car, yet we don't do that kind of same research when we purchase health insurance. Also, do a little bit of digging on yourself. What is your own history? How do you find yourself right now? Take stock of your lifestyle. So if you're smoking or if you're a heavy drinker or you uh, participate in risky behavior like hang gliding and auto racing, um, those are things that you'd want to consider too. If you're already in a plan with no chance to change right now, that's no excuse. Scott says be proactive, see what you're covered for, or find a timeline for when you can change your coverage. Be a student of the game, understand what you're buying, understand where your place in the world is at that particular time, and then, you know, get help. <laughs> it's sad. I'm 26 years old. <laughs> we get one to daddy? Not even 30 yet. Bethany's sense of self, who she is, has changed because of her inability to get surgery. She recently had to give up her beloved teaching job because of her symptoms. Just knowing that I have three kids that I could better parent, um, I have a whole school of children that I love dearly, and not being able to do that, it's sad. With this Call for Action report, I'm Leah Lynchide for WISC News 3. Bethany's insurance company, Dean Health Plan, told us its chief medical officer has expedited an independent review of her case to see if a surgery is a medical necessity for her, but said it couldn't share any more specifics of her case. Meanwhile, she says she now has an appointment with a surgeon at UW Health. Still, should Bethany decide to take on her operation, it would be completely out of pocket for her since the UW is not in her network. Nine minutes past seven right now, ringing in 109 with some high-flying, globe-trotting fun. Remember her? The then 106-year-old gained national attention for dancing with former President Obama. Now she's back in the headlines this holiday season. We're catching up with Virginia when News 3 This Morning Sunday returns.
Sunshine continues to be what we watch rise over the horizon going through the morning, seeing more light to the sky, and I do think we'll see plenty of blue out there as we go into the afternoon as well. For now, the sunrise has been absolutely gorgeous. Temperatures have been holding steady at about 24 degrees through the morning. Once the sun comes up, we'll really begin to see those temperatures warm up as well. 27 in Janesville right now, 29 in Monroe. You work up to the Dells, they're already at 32, and I do think more of us will see those temperatures making it into the 30s today. Temperatures, though, are already warmer than we were at this time yesterday by 16 degrees in the Dells, 5 degrees for us here in Madison. And we did have some cloud cover move through earlier. That's now moving out of the picture, but we're paying attention to the next round of cloud cover. That's starting to arrive from the west as we speak. It's not a big deal, though. There's no rain or snow associated with that. Really, most of the country is quiet. There's a little bit of rain and snow in the north and east and some rain coming into the Pacific Northwest as we speak. But high pressure is really in control of our pattern, folks. It's been in, our, in control of our pattern through the weekend, and it's staying that way. Other than some cold fronts coming through, I do think this will keep us dry with plenty of sunshine going through the next several days. Let's go ahead and show you guys how temperatures are going to respond behind the cold front that comes in this afternoon. You first you'll notice those winds turning out of the north and northwest. Those temperatures will still make it into the low and mid 40s today. Overnight tonight we'll see things cool down. Then it's tomorrow we'll see those temperatures making it only into the lower 30s for those highs. So it will be about 10 degrees colder for highs tomorrow as opposed to today. But we do gradually moderate things through the middle of the upcoming week where temperatures will be closer to 40 for those highs by next weekend. That's when another cold front comes through and that could be one that begins to shake up the pattern just a little bit. We've been watching this colder air on the move, but for the most part, it has really been bottled up across most of Canada. So we've had this milder pattern, but here we are in the 21st. You see that first dip of colder air that shoots on in here. Then we'll have another dip right around Christmas and just watch how overall Canada becomes colder that will set the stage for the lower 48 to become colder over time, especially between Christmas and headed into January. So that'll certainly be something to keep our eyes on. In terms of white Christmas probabilities, we still don't see any true organized systems with the colder air coming in, though there are some chances for some flurries next week, and we are watching those flurry chances. But for the most part, temperatures are going to be in the 30s as we go through the next several days. And then by next weekend and into Christmas, we'll have some days with highs back in the 20s. All right, Chris, thank you. Anytime, Josh. We've been asking you to share your morning with us and check out this picture. Thomas emailed us in from Platteville. Just a beautiful shot of the sunrise there. Looks like some fog, some frost. We've had a lot of frosty mornings lately. Makes for, for some good pictures. Thank you so much for sharing, Thomas. What does your morning look like? Take a picture and post it to our Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter and use that hashtag, MyNews3Morning. And that's how we can pick out our favorites and air them right here on News 3 this morning. She became an instant internet sensation when her dance with President Obama and the First Lady went viral three years ago. Now 109-year-old Virginia McLaren is making headlines again, getting into the holiday spirit with some famous globe-trotting friends. Nicole Killian has that story. At 109, Virginia McLaren is still dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wearing her Harlem Globetrotters jersey, the energetic centenarian showed off her basketball and singing skills at a D.C. charter school. Globetrotters gonna shine all over the world. <laughs> and shared her words of wisdom with the children. Be sure to listen to mother and dad. They never get in trouble. Will you do that for me? Yeah! Oh, <laughs> McLaurin stole hearts around the world on her 106th birthday. So what's, what's the secret to, to, the to still dancing at 106? After dancing with then President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama in the Oval Office. I didn't think I'd ever live to get in the White House. I was so happy I couldn't believe it at first. Cameras have followed McLaurin ever since, capturing her at baseball games and in the privacy of her own home as she was issued a new photo ID from D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. Yes, we got it done. <laughs> McLaurin has been teaming up with the Globetrotters in recent years to help spread goodwill and holiday cheer. We're going to give everybody in here, all the kids, 
a ticket to our game the day after Christmas. She says she still finds time to volunteer at her age and shows no signs of slowing down. Nicole Killian for WISC News 3. I love her spirit. Time right now is 718. For the first time in nearly a decade, the number of abortions in Wisconsin is up. And a local recovery center is offering a non-traditional treatment for patients dealing with opioid addiction. Plus, the headline none of us wanted to see this week, a warning not to eat raw cookie dough this holiday season. Health Watch is just ahead on News 3 This Morning Sunday. And we continue to watch that beautiful sunrise take shape over the area this morning. The temperature 24 degrees. Winds are calm though, so a wind chill is not really something that we will have to worry about. We're still seeing those temperatures on the warmer end. Black River Falls at 13, so they're one of the colder spots. The Dells at 31 and Mineral Point at 32. So we're already starting to see some of those 30s show up this morning. Expect more of that under the sunny sky. We'll reach 35 by 10 o'clock by lunchtime, 39. Temperatures should top out around 44 degrees today, and we'll see a few more cloud cover, but or a few more clouds, but generally will be pretty sunny today, Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. On the Health Watch at 722 this morning, new data shows the number of abortions performed in Wisconsin increased for the first time in eight years. According to data released by the State Department of Health, where there were around 5,300 abortions performed last year compared to 5,600 the year before. Women between 20 and 24 years old accounted for 30% of abortion patients across the state. Right now, a recovery center in Madison is offering more than traditional treatment to help patients struggling with opioid addiction. Tolurian is now offering recovery coaches who have often dealt with addiction themselves. They are trained to help others through the process of getting treatment, working with health insurance companies, and ultimately maintaining sobriety. 
Those coaches are now part of Tellurian's medication-assisted treatment program, using medication to help the brain become less dependent on opioids in addition to therapy. You can find more information about the center's treatment programs at Tellurian.org. Well, the week started with a startling warning from the CDC. Don't eat raw cookie dough. Okay, maybe we've heard that before, but this year they're reminding people not to eat any form of the dough, even if it doesn't contain eggs. Heather Brown has the story for Minneapolis. All of us. How can I not, right? Right. Fine. Most of us. I don't want to get a foodborne illness. Have licked the spoon or taken a little bite. Absolutely. Sometimes it's the reason I make cookies. <laughs> That's the best part of being a baker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You gotta, no hesitation. No hesitation. He's not afraid. He eats it's, yeah. everything raw. Do you ever sneak a little bit? I personally don't, but I don't actually <laughs> like cookie dough. Oh, oh my gosh. Carlota Medus is with the Department of Health. What is so bad about it? Well, it's raw. <laughs> uh, when they're raw, they can have pathogens like salmonella or E. coli, different types of E. coli, and it can make you very sick. We've always heard that. My, my big sister doesn't do it. Auntie Darlene doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's afraid of the salmonella and the E. coli. Well, she just follows the rules. <laughs> Most people know raw eggs can give you salmonella, but the flour can be dangerous too. The flour that's not treated could give you E. coli. Yes. Really? Yeah. That's crazy if the flour is not cooked. The reason why it's risky is because flour is, it comes from grains. So in the field where the grains are grown, there are animals, a number of animals that can introduce contamination into the field. And when that grain is collected and transported, that contamination stays with it. After a 2005 cake batter ice cream salmonella outbreak, any cookie dough marketed as edible, like an ice cream, must be heated before it's sold. They actually cook it so that it, um, it so it's not dangerous. And as for the store-bought tubes, Nestle and General Mills told me today, while they heat treat the flour in their raw dough, they still recommend what's right on the package. Do not consume raw cookie dough. What if you don't have a big giant scoop, but just a little taste? Bad idea. Even a small amount of contamination can make people very, very sick. It really depends on the person. You say better safe than sorry. Absolutely. Auntie Darlene might be onto something, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Heather Brown. <laughs> I think so. And here's something else you shouldn't eat, red meat. Two new studies suggest eating red meat. Found a diet rich in red meat increases your circulating levels of a substance known as TMAO which has been shown to lead to cardiovascular disease. A study in the European Heart Journal said those who ate red meat saw an increase in TMAO in their blood and urine. There's a new report out this week showing Wisconsin dropping in the country's health rankings. The United Health Foundation says we are down two spots to 23rd in the race for the healthiest state. Some of our top issues are excessive drinking, we're worst in the U.S. for that, and low per capita public health funding we're ranked 47th on that measure. In the past six years, obesity has increased 16%, now impacting 32% of adults in our state. We do have some strengths, though, including low levels of air pollution and a low percentage of uninsured people. <laughs> 726 right now, still ahead this morning. Why now may be some of the best times to do some pre-Christmas cleaning, but you'll want to be careful where you're dumping your unwanted items. And there's a warning from pet store owners about adopting this time of year. What you should know before Santa brings your kid a dog or cat. The news is back in the morning on News 3 This Morning Sunday.
The hustle and bustle of the holiday season is upon us as millions of Americans pack airports and roads traveling to see loved ones. What you need to know before taking off. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday. Good Sunday morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning Sunday. It is 7.30 on the December 16th. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese has your Sunday forecast in just a moment, but first here's what's making news this morning. You won't see any green cabs out on the roads today after the company announced it has suspended service indefinitely as a result of a string of armed robberies. Here's a live look at the green cab taxi lot this morning where those cars are now sitting. Green cab ended its service around 930 last night after a taxi driver was robbed at gunpoint when responding to a ride request. This happened near North Mill Street. Another driver was also robbed Friday while picking someone up near the 5300 block of Raywood Road. A spokesperson says it's unclear when drivers will be able to return to the roads. Right now, Baraboo police are increasing officer presence at schools and school district buildings heading into the last week before winter break. They're closely monitoring who is allowed in as the department looks into video and flyers with anti-Semitic language targeting the schools this week. They threaten students and teachers to stay away this Tuesday, which is when the high school is scheduled to have an all-day event about tolerance. That program is set to go on as scheduled. Now, this is all in response to the photo of Baraboo students appearing to give a Nazi salute. District officials say the most recent threats are not believed to be credible, but they are taking those active security measures. The Madison Police Department is taking to Twitter to remind everyone to slow down on the Beltline. This after an officer clocked someone going close to 100 miles an hour near Whitney Way last week. The driver was sighted and no one was hurt, but whoever runs MPD's Twitter page is describing a flash of red that could have been Santa's sleigh. The page asks, was it really Santa and his reindeer at such a high rate of speed? No, what did we see but a Dodge Ram truck at 97 for speed? Wow. It is another must-win game for the Packers who are in Chicago today to take on the Bears. Chicago is first in the NFC North with a 9-4 record. Today's game will be the first away game and the first division matchup for interim head coach Joe Philbin. The Packers are coming off of a win at home against the Falcons where Aaron Rodgers was able to set a record for a number of consecutive passes he threw without an interception. They beat the Bears by one at Lambeau back in September. Kickoff is at noon at Soldier Field. 7.32 this morning and just a gorgeous start to the day out there, Chris. That's right, Josh. It won't be a bad day for anyone who's maybe heading down for that game either. We're watching the sunrise over Madison. We've been watching that for a while now. The temperature is still at 24 degrees and the winds are still calm. So again, no worries in terms of a wind chill. Generally, though, things are warmer than we were at this time yesterday by about 5 degrees here in Madison. 16 degrees warmer as you work your way up towards the Dells and all of us will continue to see those warmer temperatures through this afternoon before things get a little bit colder headed into your Monday. 27 in Janesville right now, 29 in Monroe. Mineral Point also at the freezing mark. Viroqua has actually dropped down to 29. They were at 31 not too long ago. Still at 31 in the Wisconsin Dells right now. One round of cloud covers moving out of the picture. We'll see the sunshine before another round of cloud cover works its way back in this afternoon. It'll be broken up though. I think we have a little bit of dry air that will help keep that sun shine around this morning expect temperatures to make it closer to 36 as we head towards lunchtime eventually topping out with those temperatures close to 44 degrees this afternoon josh Chris, thank you tis the season to maybe clean out the family closet and make room for new clothes santa may be bringing but there's a reminder from the madison streets division to not put those in the recycling bin old shirts and pants as well as ropes and hoses can get tangled up in the sorting equipment if that stuff gets stuck, the entire operation has to stop in order to remove the clothing and restart the machines. Those crews encourage you to donate to area thrift stores instead of trying to recycle fabric items. A record number of people are expected to travel this holiday season. AAA says 112 million people will be traveling more than 50 miles this holiday season for the seventh straight year. Travel between December 22nd and January 1st is reaching a new high. We really are attributing the increase to the strength of the economy. We see that consumer spending is strong and also unemployment is low. This year up 4% from last year fueled by falling gas prices. Nearly 7 million people will be flying, which is also up 4% from last year. 
AAA says the busiest days to fly will be December 22nd, 23rd, and the 26th. Well, as we head into the busiest time of the year at airports, the TSA is announcing they've already topped last year's record for number of guns found at airport checkpoints. Screeners spotted more than 4,000 firearms in carry-on bags so far this year, which averages out to roughly 11 guns a day. Get this, more than 80% of those were loaded. The TSA is rolling out new CT scanners that should make it easier for screeners to spot guns and is working with airports to increase signage to remind people before they get to the checkpoint. While there are rules that allow a gun to be carried in a checked bag, a gun is never allowed in a carry-on. 735 right now. There's no question that puppies and kitties make for adorable gifts, but this holiday season, pet store owners are encouraging families to consider several factors before deciding to adopt. If you want a dog or cat just because they are cute or your friend just got one, you should wait. Pet store owners stress you should also not give in just because your kids have been asking over and over and over. However, if, you're been, or if you've been considering a pet for a while and now is a good time both financially and logistically, you might be ready for the responsibility of owning a cat or dog. Keep in mind though, pets aren't free or cheap. They need food, visits to the vet, medicine and training on top of a bed, litter box and toys. Definitely important to think about um, what that commitment looks like, um, what supplies are needed, and then what that pet's going to need, especially based on age um, and sometimes breed of pet. Um, so what does work schedules look like, um, and are you able to leave work to go home for a potty training pet? Either pet can cost you a couple hundred to several thousand dollars each year. Amazon is extending its free shipping for the holidays, even if customers don't have a Prime account. The promotion was slated to end this weekend, but will now end this Tuesday, December 18th. For Prime members, the company also announced it's expanding its list of cities that offer same-day and one-day shipping. For those procrastinating, orders placed before noon on Christmas Eve will arrive by 9 p.m. that day if you have Prime. And if you're hoping to wrap up your holiday shopping in town, the Madison Makers Market is kicking off a week of pop-up shops and events to help local nonprofits. The market's Winter Wonderful will run tomorrow through Saturday at the Commonwealth Gallery on South Baldwin Street. That's located between East Wash and Willie Streets. 737 right now, if you still have some holiday shopping to do and a pet or something crafty isn't on your list, you better come up with some other ideas. It is Christmas crunch time, folks. And luckily, we've got Gordman's here to help. We're sharing gift ideas perfect for anyone left on your list. News 3 This Morning Sunday will return in a moment.
Welcome back. It is Christmas crunch time as people scramble to buy last minute gifts and Christmas is just a little more than a week away. Can you believe it? Pam Skeel from Gordman's is here with some perfect ideas. Perfect for the people still left on your gift buying list. It's kind of that crunch time and you've got some good ideas for us this morning. I sure hope so because um, I'm in the crunch time myself. So <laughs> it comes from the experience more than anything else. Um, for me, it's always my kids. I always try to make sure everybody's balanced when they're opening up Christmas presents on Christmas Day. Um, Lord forbid one of the kids have more than a, one more present <laughs> than the other one because they are keeping tabs, right? Um, so Hot Wheels has always been really good. Paw Patrol is really good this year for the boys. Um, Marvel is hot for both um, the boys and the girls. It's a really hot commodity. Um, Barbie is also really well. Um, Barbie and baby dolls and anything like that for the girls. Um, men also for their their men caves. Um, <laughs> we have all of the team things that you can think about. Um, that's always a really good um, no mistake that that will be a winner um, for the Christmas list. Fragrances is good. Um, bath and body care for women because we do like to pamper ourselves when we're not at work or you know when we're away from the family. And then the almighty gift card. You can't go wrong with a gift card by any means. What have you kind of been seeing trending this year as far as the gifts go? It looks like there's a lot that kind of deal with like the experiences. Is that something that you've yeah. been noticing? I would say definitely. Um, you know, up here in, because I won't lie, I'm not originally from Wisconsin. Um, so over the last six months, um, us Wisconsin people really do love our sports. So um, team is really, really a hot commodity um, and you can't go wrong with that. That's a huge trend for us. Um, Paw Patrol has been really a huge hit for the boys. Um, and again, you really can't go wrong with Barbie. She's such a tradition every year at Christmas time. She's been around for 50 plus years. Um, and you know, a lot of people just buy the Barbie doll and they'll pack it away for later for you know, sentimental keepsakes. Yeah, you bet. So obviously I think we've got like nine days left. What are uh, Gorman's hours kind of going into the holiday for those kind of waiting until that last minute? We are open late um, every single day leading up to Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve we will be open until 8, but we're going to be there until 11 or midnight every night until then. And we're also open early anywhere between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning. So we have some very good extended hours and the mall has been very good to us too. And they're also going to be doing some extended hours as well. So you got some good gifts ideas. I'm assuming that some of this stuff can be found online as well. Um, we do, but you know, Gordman's has such um, a wide variety. It really is best just to come into the store. Um, we have such good um, prices. We have such good um, variety that a lot of those things will be gone before you even know about it. Um, so really it is best just to come into the store and see what we got. All right, Pam. Well, as always, thanks for coming in. Some great gift ideas for those uh, procrastinators out there. I, I'm one of them. I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> At least you admit it. Oh, well, you know, that's half the battle. All right, Pam. Well, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas to you guys, too. Thank you. Well, the new year is right around the corner. One and nine have officially arrived in Times Square. A flatbed truck dropped the two giant seven-foot-tall numbers off this week, where they are now on display until Thursday. Then they'll be hoisted up to the top of Times Square, completing the 2019 sign that lights up at midnight for the ball drop on December 31st. Time right now is 744. We've gotten spoiled with beautiful temperatures this weekend, but are they going to last into the work week? And can we keep our fingers crossed for a white Christmas? Chris is looking ahead at your work week forecast coming right up. But first, happy birthday to Paisley and all the other kiddos turning three today. Thanks for celebrating and waking up with us on News 3 This Morning Sunday.
And we continue to see the sunshine over south central Wisconsin. Now the whole ball of the sun radiant over our Edgewater sky cam. Here's the capital just to the right of that. More sunshine expected as we go throughout the day. The temperature right now 24 degrees. It's been steady at 24 just about all morning long. Winds are still calm though, which is certainly the good news. 23 though now in Janesville. We've actually seen a little bit of a temperature drop there. 21 in Lone Rock, 14 in Black River Falls, and 18 in Camp Douglas. Ultimately, all of these temperatures will continue to increase as we go through the morning. Already temperatures are 5 degrees warmer than they were 24 hours ago here. 16 degrees warmer in the Dells. La Crosse is 10 degrees warmer than they were 24 hours ago. That's all a part of a southwesterly wind that is warming things up before a cold front cools things off as we head into your Monday. One band of cloud cover in there right now. That has moved to our east. The next round of cloud cover moving in from the west, and I think that'll be high filtered cloud cover. So we should see some sunshine underneath that thicker cloud cover down across the southern plains right now. But really, the weather is generally calm across the country, and it has been uh, for some time with high pressure in control over the nation's midsection and staying in control. We've got some weak cold fronts that are sliding on through here. But the moral of the story is those really won't be a big deal with the high pressure keeping the air dry. That stays in control, but once it moves to our south and east, we'll begin to see those temperatures rebound a little bit as we go through the middle of the work week. Low 40s for those highs today will cool down into the 20s, yes, but then into your Monday, temperatures are going to be held in check a little bit, only really getting to just above the freezing mark for the afternoon highs. We're going with 34, but here's that southwesterly wind through the middle of the week. That's where we'll see those temperatures in mid 30s to upper 30s, if not close to 40 for some. Then next Sunday hits. That is the next round of colder air that will move in just in time for Christmas. We have been watching the pattern as a whole. Now watch this colder air up around Canada. It's really been bottled up, but we're going to see it gradually begin to work its way southward. That first dip comes in on December 21st, followed by another one. Here we are on December 23rd. That'll bring the cold air in time for Christmas, rounding out the month with that colder air building up. That could change up the pattern a little bit back to a colder one. But for now, we're only giving about a 10% chance of a white Christmas. That's mainly going to be due to some chances for some flurries next week. Otherwise, we are remaining dry in our weather pattern. Only some chances for flurries, but there are no organized systems that are showing up over the next 10 days. Now, if you look farther than that, there are signs that the pattern does try to get active again towards New Year. So we'll watch that potential. In the meantime, Sam and Lily, rolling in the mud in the sun. <laughs> we don't really have much mud around here, but I'll tell you what, we'll have plenty of sunshine throughout the week and today if you want to be out walking your dogs this afternoon. I think just like us humans, the pets have been enjoying this beautiful oh, weather. Oh, yes, they have. You can find just about any pet just lounging in the sun right around now. All right, Chris, thank mm -hmm. you. Well, tomorrow on News 3 this morning, we're going to be heading to Baraboo for a preview of the town's event, Unite Against Hate. But first, on the news this morning, a whole new world, how music is helping underprivileged kids in some of the country's toughest neighborhoods find their rhythm and purpose. Thanks for watching News 3 This Morning Sunday.
Welcome back at 754 and we leave you with a musical note this morning. For kids in some of America's toughest neighborhoods, music is unlocking the door to a whole new world. Vladimir Duthiers has the story. It's, it's a, Growing up in yeah, Baltimore, 16-year-old Keith Fleming had to make a choice. When did you realize that lying before you were two paths? One that led to trouble and one that led to where you are today? Um, kind of sort of like fifth grade, somewhere around there. From there, one, two, ready, and he chose to be here. A year-round music program called Orc Kids, run by the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. He started coming around age six. Fleming was one of just 30 kids when the program started 10 years ago. Today, it's 1,300 with a year-long waiting list. I just stuck to it because opportunities came. You traveled all over the world? Traveled right? all over the world, yeah. You've been to London? Been to London and in Austria. Innsbruck, Austria, yeah. So how was everybody's day today? But he's not the only musician at the dinner table. All three of his siblings are also in Orc Kids. That's it! His 17-year-old sister, Deshay Banks, plays the cello. That's it. That's it. How proud are you of your ability? I'm very proud because I never thought I could do this. So like knowing that I could make something come out of that instrument is just like everything. Deshay and Keith started as percussionists on really? the bucket. Executive director Raquel Whiting Gilmer says or kids is not about making music. It's about fine-tuning young lives. Many people who grew up in Baltimore never leave their neighborhood, but our students leave every week, and that opportunity is going to take them places. For Keith Fleming, his talent has taken him to the highly selective Baltimore School of Arts. Without orchids, where would you be? Without orchids, I don't, I can't see what path I would have took or like where I would have ended up. When you're leading your own band and you're going on tour famous, will you remember us? And yeah, I got you. Hey, hey, uh, hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> now that's the sound of success. Vladimir Dutip, CBS News, Baltimore. Great story there. And speaking of music, I've been singing, I've been dreaming of a white Christmas, <laughs> but that isn't looking too good right now. Well, I'll tell you what, here comes the sun, as the Beatles <laughs> would say. We've been watching the sunshine all morning long, and we're going to see more of that going through today, minus a little bit of cloud cover at some times. But otherwise, it's really going to be a beautifully sunny day. So more sunshine as we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even into Thursday. Towards the end of the week, we'll see some clouds. Thanks, Chris. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.